morning everyone you voted on instagram for a video on how to look after your horse in the hot weather it has been unseasonably warm here in the uk for the last few days it's been up to sort of 36 degrees which is very very hot for here um so i'm going to show you what we do when it is really hot today it's meant to get up to about 30 degrees but it's about 10 to 7 right now which means it's nice and cool and that honestly is the first step ride first thing in the morning the earlier the better when it's nice and cool uh, and then and then uh, i'll show you the next steps as we go along let's get into it So as I said, it's a little bit before 7am at this point. I'm going to feed Ted breakfast after we've ridden so that we can get riding out while it's as cool as possible before it heats up. I'm going to give him a quick brush. As I've said before, I don't give him a huge amount of grooming in the summer. I do love to give him a good groom, but on this morning, just a quick rub with the dandy brush and a quick hoof pick, checking him over for any marks, anything that's wrong, anything I should be looking out for. We are both quite warm already and we're both in a very relaxed mood so this is taking us slightly longer than normal it's quite a sort of chilled vibe this morning even ted is looking very relaxed being by himself and I'm, I'm so happy with how he behaves on the yard now. When I first started to ride him back in February, he would be really upset about being on his own and he would kind of pace back and forth and not stand still and be quite difficult sometimes to tack up. But now he's used to it as part of the routine. He knows that we ride in the morning. He's much more chill about it and this just makes me happy. It makes me happy that he's relaxed and it makes my life easier when it comes to tacking him up. Um, I had someone message me on Instagram how I can tack him up so quickly. I had a great head lad who taught me to tack up really quickly and when you've got seven you soon learn to be fast. You'll see that I'm putting the fly spray on my hands to put it on his face and his ears. I don't want to spray his face, I don't think that's very kind. So today we're going down to the straw field so I'm going to take you with me. I've noted that you guys are asking for slightly longer hacking videos so I'm going to try and give you that today. I'm going to change my stirrups and just make them a bit shorter because I have them at my sort of dressage length. So I'm changing that and then I'm going to check my girth. Obviously, if we're going to go cantering around the field, we want to make sure that our girth is nice and tight. So heading down to the straw field now, it was such a beautiful morning. Like This is one of the benefits of riding early is the sun was in a really gorgeous place in the sky and we saw quite a bit of wildlife. I'll point them out, but there was a few foxes. We saw a deer as well. That field that Ted is looking at there is where the horses are out at the moment. So we got down to the straw field and the first thing that we're going to do is just walk around the edge, uh, warm him up. So we're going to do a sort of half round of the field in walk now and then we'll do a little canter. I don't think we'll do much more than that because as I said it's quite warm and we just don't need to. I don't want to push him too much today, there's no need for it and the ground is quite hard. So we have our little warm up now, pretty long rain, nice and relaxed and then once I get to the other edge I'm going to turn around. I typically don't advocate for turning your horses around on a hack, but my whole thing in this straw field is doing things differently every single time so that he doesn't get used to doing the same thing and therefore anticipating the movement. So as we push into trot here, I'm just seeing how he feels. Again, I'm not asking for an outline or anything. I just want him moving nicely. He obviously wants to canter because classic Ted. But yeah, I just want to see how he feels, make sure he's feeling good, feeling sound, how fresh is he, how lazy is he so I can get a sense before we go into canter. So we'll top down this one side and then we'll pop into canter as we go up the long side and have a little pop along there. I had someone ask me as well whether they get scared from the traffic that you can see up ahead and the answer is no, the trams run along here as well and he's very, very well behaved. I think they're so used to it now that it doesn't bother them. So as we come around the corner, there's a little bit of a dip in the ground, so I'll just get over that and then once we're on the path properly, we will pop into a little canter. So I don't want him going too fast here. I just want a nice steady canter. It's really good. I don't want to blast him up this long side, especially as I said, the ground is not as soft as it could be. So we're just going to have a little canter and then we'll stop about halfway. Usually I would go down the long side, but again, in the interest of doing something different every time, I want to be able to pull him up whenever I want and that to not be a problem. So it's sort of a good practice in that way as well of changing your gait all the time so that they don't get used to cantering in the same spot. So 
So as we uh, came down this long side, I noticed that the keeper on the right side of his throat latch was actually um, off. It slipped down. So I'm just here trying to pop it back up. You want to make sure your keepers are tucked in. It's really important. Otherwise, your bridle can come undone. And this is the worst place possible for that to happen, Stand. obviously, in the middle of an open Stand. field. So I pop that keeper back in. You can see me sliding it up there. And then we will continue on our way. I use this next straight just to get him on the bit a little bit and work in a little bit of an outline. I'm trying to incorporate that into our hacking a little bit more when we're hacking alone. Just bring in some of that schooling that we've been working on into our hacks. One, to make it more interesting and varied. And two, just to get him using his muscles properly and not having to always do that in the school. So I did that for the one long side. And then the rest of the time we just kind of walked casually on a long rain, let him cool down a little bit and relax and just have this as a nice morning. And honestly it was. I really love riding up here by myself when it's really early. It's just, oh, there's the fox, the first fox we saw. It's really like peaceful and it makes me have a moment of sort of self-reflection and thinking, it sounds silly, but I love it up here. So again, we walked around this long side and then in a moment you will see that we actually saw another fox cross our path and we saw a deer. So there's that second fox just up ahead. You might be able to see it. And there's also a deer that leaps out in front of us. Everything looks further away when you watch the GoPro footage, but it was actually much closer in person. And I think that's one of the really amazing things about riding on horseback is that you can get so close to nature because they almost don't see you as a human. They just see the horse, which is quite a privilege. So it's something I really enjoy, particularly when it's this early in the morning. So we're just heading up to the end of the field now and if you've watched my videos for a while you might remember the absolute nightmare that I used to have with getting back on Ted. So here I have to get off Ted to close this gate, it's not possible to do it from horseback, it's quite a stiff bolt. Um, and I used to spend so long trying to get back on him and I wouldn't give up because I, I am sort of of the impression that you should always, have, um, always be able to get on your horse from anywhere so it's really important to me that he learnt that that's okay. Good boy, you're the best boy. So um, now it doesn't take me any time at all. He knows exactly what I'm asking for and he stands still. But in the beginning, if you go back to some of my earlier videos, I'll link them out. Um, he, I, it took me like 20 attempts. So I'm really happy that we've worked through that as a partnership. It certainly makes my life easier. And we've been together now as a partnership for just under six months. So we've had a long time to kind of bond. And during the summer, Ted's owner had an injury. So I was able to spend a bit more time with him. And that I think really, really helped actually us get to know each other more. Um, so now that we're back to a normal sharing schedule of three days a week, I know him much better, he knows me much better, and we have our sort of routine, which I think really works. So here I am jumping back on, as I said, this used to take me ages. He would basically step away at the last minute. Um, he didn't like the pressure of me on his shoulders, me above him, and it would just kind of freak him out. And um, now he stands there without a trouble, although I sort of have to do a 180 spin to get on him, which is, you know, kind of I guess makes me feel flexible. He always wants to walk off here and I try and get into the habit of making him stand. He does this Wait. every time I get on in the school or otherwise, he's just quite Wait. impatient. So it's important that we stand for a few seconds and then I'm the one who asks us to walk on. So he doesn't get into the habit of just walking off when you're not ready, particularly if you sort of don't have your stirrups or something. So there we have it. That was about 25 to 30 minutes. It's still really early. It's still about half seven, but it's already getting warm. I think it was about 26 degrees at this point. So I'll show you what I do when I bring him back um, and get him sort of showered and hosed off, ready for the day. So first things first is to untack. Typically I would just untack him there and then take his bridle and saddle off there. But because I wanted to show you, I've obviously tied him up first. So I've learned to untack quite quickly. I'm quite good at it now. It's much easier than tacking up, that's for sure. So I get that off him as soon as possible. I don't really worry about my boots and everything. I want him sorted before me. So the only thing I take off is my hat and then I sort myself out later. What I also do is offer him water. It's obviously very hot, so I like to give him a bucket of water. And you've got to remember that even though we were only riding for 30 minutes, he's been out of his field for at least an hour, and he's going to be out of his field for even half an hour more. So it's important to offer him water and make sure that he has that. And then I will just hose him off. I've realized recently that when I start going down his body to hose his sort of saddle area, he actually steps so that I end up with the hose on his neck. He seems to like that running water on his neck, which I discovered. So he does this on both sides. He sort of, when I try and move the hose backwards, he steps backwards so that his neck is there, which I just think is very funny. He must enjoy having it on his neck there for a little bit. It must feel nice. I thought maybe he might want to drink from the hose. He didn't, he just wanted it on his neck. So I'm hosing him off and getting all the sweat off him for the first run. And then I will actually 
sweat scrape him, take off that water and then hose him down once more. Um, I usually hose down until the water that's coming off him is quite cool. You'll notice that when you first wet scrape, if they're hot, then the water is warm as well. And I would just recommend that you sweat scrape as soon as you have hose, because if you leave the water on to sort of drip dry, the water actually ends up insulating them and then they actually end up being warmer. So I always run the hose over them a couple of times and then I do their face and I'll show you how I do that as well. So I take the cloth and just rub it gently over his face. Obviously don't use the hose on his face, he would hate that. So there we go, Ted has got his fly mask on, he's got a load of sun cream on, he's got fly spray on, and that is it. So to recap, ride as early as you can, wash them off in the middle of the day and after a ride and keep running that water until it comes off pretty much cold. Lots of fly spray, lots of fly masks, lots of sun cream, and if it feels too hot to ride, it probably is. I hope you've enjoyed this video and we will see you next time.